Hey guys, stay tuned because I will be reviewing the comic books that I picked up on August 7th, 2019. And also just giving you guys a quick update on how the move went. And yeah, any more general updates I got for you. So stay tuned. What's up comic book fans? My name is Bruce Monroe and welcome back to the channel. I just want to start off with a big... So I guess not big, but I just want to apologize for missing last week. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, I was moving. Um, I did move into a awesome four bedroom apartment with my amazing uh, girlfriend Stephanie and her two kids, Nate and Sophia, um, and my son Jack. And so if you have ever moved two apartments into one apartment, the amount of stuff you guys have and the amount of chaos that, that uh, it takes to do that, um, you, you'll understand that the reason why I didn't um, make a video last week, and I also, I didn't watch, I haven't watched any TV in a very long time. I haven't read the comic books from last week. I think I read two. I read um, The Batman Who Last Number Seven, which wrapped, which was a really good book. I definitely suggest you guys pick that up if you haven't picked it up. Um, and I think I read the uh, Avengers from last week. That's it. And there was, I picked up actually like seven or eight books that week. So I'm definitely behind there. I still have books from the previous week. Um, but good news guys, I picked up, uh, I've actually picked up 11 books. I've read 10 of the 11. The only reason why I didn't read the last one is because I haven't read the one from the last month, um, which was Doom Patrol. Um, I didn't want to read two if I haven't read one yet. And I definitely didn't have time to read one and two. So, with that said, um, yeah, that was pretty much the update on the move. The up move went really, really well. It was chaotic. It was a little crazy. Um, but I am all moved in. The only place that really hasn't been unpacked is the basement, which I'm going to set up my new studio. Um, my wonderful mechanical engineer girlfriend is going to help me build some, um, some set walls. And it's going to be great. So, uh... Yeah, that's an update on the channel. Um, let's dive right into the books that I picked up this week. And those books were Absolute Carnage, number one, Daredevil, number nine, House of X, number two, Savage Avengers, number four, Deceased, number four, Batman 76, Justice League 29, Lois Lane, number two, Sea of Stars, number two, and Space Bandits, number two. All right, guys, let's dive right in with Absolute Carnage, number one. This is written by Donny Cates and art by Ryan Stegman. This is definitely my pick of the week. I have been stoked. I have been excited. I have been, I don't know, I guess really excited um, for this act, for this big summer event to start. I've been a huge uh, Donny Cates Venom fan ever since he picked up the book, what, 14 issues ago or so? Uh, I'll put the actual number on the, up on the um, screen, but... It's been such a fun run. The whole mythos he's telling, uh, he went and like, you know, retold the whole symbiote backstory, and it's just an awesome, awesome story. And this is picking up right where they, that, um, from the final issue of Venom, the, or not the final, the last issue of Venom, and rolling right into this. I sadly have not picked up any of like the, the lead up books to this. Like, any, there's like been a lot of Carnage books that have been like, you know, our prelude stories to this. So I definitely have missed some of that, but man, this book is incredible. Um, the artwork by Ryan Stegman is absolutely out of this world. It fits Venom perfectly. It's, it's one of the more enjoyable, he's, he's just incredible. It's hard for me to describe the amount. And I think what, it's very cartoony, I'll say that, um, especially when you get a lot of Venom on screen. But even the faces, a little cartoony sometimes. Like, there's a guy down here um, that's a little cartoony. But man, the amount of detail he puts into each panel is just awesome. Like, all the line work on the tracks and everything, it's just not all artists do this. And when you see the amount of line work and dedication to the all the art on each page it's just awesome and with this oh yes i mean come on this is a great great shot and look how crazy venom looks it's just i don't want to go into too much detail in the book but um 
And then this Venom and the symbiote and Eddie Brock have been separated for like the last six issues, I want to say. And in this issue, um, they come back together. Carnage comes down. They fight Carnage for a little bit. Um, you get the details of, of what um, Carnage is trying to do. Um, and, our, and that's basically free Null from where he's trapped in the symbiote homeworld. Um, Spider-Man shows up. You knew Spider-Man was going to show up. It's a Venom. Venom always shows up when there's Spider-Man. Um, it's just an awesome, awesome read. The Maker's back. I mean, oh. The dialogue in this book is amazing. Um, I would say that some of the Spidey lines are a little cheesy, but it's Spidey. He's always cheesy. This book is just an awesome, awesome read. I'm so excited to see where this goes. Um, it's gruesome. There's a, it's definitely a little bit of a horror book. Uh, it, it is just awesome. Oh. I know I'm not doing the best job describing this, but it was an excellent read, super fun. The artwork by Ryan Stegman is on point. It's beautiful, it's detailed, it, it, it gives you, it elevates Don and Kate's story to a 10, a 12, a 20. It's so good. Um, I would highly suggest you guys pick this book up, especially if you're reading Venom. If not, this is gonna be um, a huge blockbuster for the summer, and there is a lot of books. Uh, there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, thirty-three, four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight books in total. If you pick up everything that's going to be related to Absolute Carnage, um, I'm probably just going to stick to Venom, and probably I think this is going to be a four or five issue arc, arc, arc or book. Um, but who knows is the covers are awesome. The art's awesome. I'm probably gonna pick up more uh, But super fun book pick of the week Definitely pick this up. All right next up. We have Daredevil number nine. This is written by Chip Sardisky in art by uh, I'm always gonna pronounce this wrong. I'm so sorry. Leet Kumar Shumar I totally butcher that. I'm so sorry um, Who is this cover by? Uh, I don't know. I'll put the cover artist up on screen because that is a dope ass cover. Um, so this picks up where the last issue left off. Um, we see it's not totally picking up where it last left off. So at the beginning of the book, we see uh, Daredevil sitting down with Reed Richards, and Daredevil is asking, you know, is there a god? Can you prove to me is there a god? I have been questioning this and questioning that. Um, and then he runs into, what is her name, uh, Mindy Libris of the Libris crime family. And in the, in the previous issue, uh, she had invited him to dinner and he didn't know her last name. And she shows up and it's a, one of the big crime families in New York City. He felt set up. And this issue, she comes back to apologize and say she knew what she did. She was trying to piss off her husband. And... It worked obviously, but you know now she she wants out of the family. She's like, oh, I'm so I'm so sick of being scared, and I don't want to do this anymore. And some things happen at the end of the book. I'm not 100% thrilled with what's happened. It's kind of, I guess it is a little daredevil because it's definitely happened before. But I don't know. This was kind of a weak book, especially the art. I did read on CBR.com two weeks ago that they are switching the artist. Um, and I would definitely agree that they should because the art in this book is, I don't know. I've complained about this artist before on this book, um, especially coming from the artist that was on this book previously. It's just, it's not Daredevil. I mean, I mean, come on, look at this hair. I don't want to bash him too much. I mean, he's, he's draw, drawing for Marvel, so obviously, He's got a style that some people like. It's just not me. Um, I do like what's happening to Cole. He's being manipulated by the owl, which I thought was pretty cool. Cole is that cop from Chicago that's a total badass who was trying to take down Daredevil. I like the story that he's doing. The writing in this book is still really good by Chip. Uh, it's just the art is not that good. And the overall story is kind of wonky right now. 
Uh, hopefully Chip gets gets back on track relatively soon because there is some good stuff in here. I really like I said what's going on with Cole. I think that's that's interesting. It's just what's going on with Daredevil now right now. I'm just not really loving. So can't really recommend you guys picking this book up. It's definitely not a good jumping in point. So maybe wait until the next arc. Hopefully that will be a little better by then. All right, next up. This was almost pick of the week. This book was so good. Uh, we have House of yeah House of X, right? House of X number two, written by Jonathan Hickman and art by Pepe, Pepe Larez. So good. What Jonathan Hickman is doing with the X Men, it's blowing my mind. It is so freaking amazing. So this whole book deals with Mora X. Um, he, she was Charles Xavier's girlfriend from a long time ago. I don't know the X-Men history very well. I'm not an ex-historian. Um, but what Jonathan Hickman is doing with Moira X is so effing interesting. And I am completely sold. I am in. The artwork by Pepe is absolutely incredible. This book was so, so good. Um, I just absolutely love what he's doing in this book. Um, I really started enjoying Avengers when, when he relaunched Avengers. And I was told, I'm like, the story is amazing. I, I had no idea because back when I was younger, I was looking at who was writing the book. I picked up the, the cool artist and just read um, what, whatever's there. And now that I realize that you got to pay attention to who's writing the book, guys. Now I know why I love the adventures. He just, he goes back and puts so much history and story behind all these characters. He gives you a reason to care for them, to want to see what's going to happen to them in the future and how they're, how, what they're doing is going to affect the rest of the team. It's just, he is such a good writer and Pepe, it's so, such amazing art and I'm, the team that they picked for House of X and Power of X is is so good. And it should have everyone picking these books up because this this is the future of X-Men and for a very long time. And it's incredible how good these books are. Definitely pick up House of X too. Um, there, I saw copies of uh, House of X number one at my local comic shop, which is uh, Midtown Comics. I'm very lucky to have that be my store because I was definitely missing books from the previous weeks, and I found um, issues still there. Especially, I missed um, Batman last uh, last night on Earth, I believe it's called number two, and they had multiple copies still there, so I was able to pick that up. But that said, pick up House of X number two. You will not be disappointed. It's a work of art, work of genius. It is so so good. All right, next up we have yes, Savage Avengers. This is written by. Gary Duggan in art by Mike DeDeo Jr. Um, it's hard for me not to bash this book. Um, I was hoping Savage Avenger was going to be this epic, wonderful tale of these crazy, savage, like, heroes that, you know, they go the extra mile. They do the things that other heroes won't do, basically, you know, like X-Force. But... I'm not on board with this story, like this wizard trying to resurrect, not resurrect, bring this god to earth who eats people and grows and can will destroy the earth, I don't know. And the story they're telling with the Punisher is silly and I don't know, I'm not loving Mike's art. It's just he... It's not selling the characters, I think is what it is. It's not selling Wolverine, it's not selling the, who the Punisher is. I think Elektra is doing, he's doing a good job of um, showing who Elektra is, but even though I think she's supposed to be more more cutthroat than what she is in this book. Dr. Voodoo is pretty cool. Um, but Venom shows up in this and he's a giant dragon, but we don't know who's in the symbiote at the time. There's Conan. And I haven't read any of the Conan stuff, which I probably should because Jason Aaron wrote it. Um, but I've heard mixed mixed reviews on that. But I don't know, guys. I would definitely pass on Savage Avengers. I definitely 
Love this variant cover though. This is a dope ass variant cover. So yeah, my suggestion is skip Savage Avengers. Um, I was really hoping this was gonna be good. I'll probably pick it up for another issue or two just to see this to finish the arc, but yeah, this is also this is not a good jumping in point, but skip it guys. That's my my review on that. Alright, next up we have Deceased number four. This is written by um, Tom Taylor and art by Trevor Hershine. Hershin? Her Her Hershin? Um, again, I'm sorry. I'm butchering your name. But super, super fun book. I am so enjoy enjoying this short little arc. It's other worlds, so it's not tied into anything going on in the actual DC universe. It's basically like, you know, Marvel zombies. And it is just super fun. The art, it's it's okay. Um, it's definitely, it's I would say, has kind of like a rough um, feeling to it. Like a, some of the characters and pages look a little, I wouldn't want to say unfinished, because obviously they're finished, but they have that kind of like, you know, rough look to them. But since this is kind of like a zombie book, it kind of fits. But I just love what he's doing with all the characters and who's left. And at the end of this book, like, people are just, heroes are just dying. You can't hold on to anyone because they are just dying left and right. Um, there was some really cool stuff in here with Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. There was a great scene with Alfred and Damien. Um, an awesome scene with um, Cyborg and Giganta. It's just you don't know what's going to happen because literally anything can happen. Because like I said, heroes are dropping left and right. Um, so if you're into zombies, if you want to like see what zombies would be like in the DC universe, even though they are not zombies. Cyborg came in down and was like, guys, these are not zombies. This is what they are. Blah, blah, blah. It's basically zombies. But super fun. Uh, definitely pick up this season number four. Tom Taylor's doing a great job. The dialogue, the, the story itself, it flows. It's, it's great. It's a super fun book. Um, so yeah, pick up Deceased, number four. Next up, we have Batman, number 76. This is written by Tom King in art by, where's my notes? Uh, Tony S. Daniels. Awesome. Awesome book. I love you. Um, so much Tom King like I am so enjoying your run on Batman it's funny Captain Adam was in the last book in Deceased and here page number two Captain Adam again in Gotham Girl uh I am just loving this story again I don't want to go too far into it um there was some great stuff with Kite Man in here which is a character I believe um Tom King made up, but I just, he's like this low level guy that has been in uh, Batman since like, I think at the beginning of his run. Um, Gotham Girl is crazy off the, off the chain. Um, finally get some Catwoman back in here and we find that she's taking care of Batman and um, cause Bane totally destroyed him. Um, Thomas Wayne, the evil Batman's hunting all down all the villains. It is just super, super, Fun read and Tony S. Daniel, he's he's a great artist. He's not one of my faves, but he's so great. Oh, beautiful Catwoman, got some Kite Man. I don't know. Super fun book, guys. Highly suggest you guys pick this up. We are, I believe, I think his last book is 85, so we have nine issues left. Oh, guys, nine issues. Come on. Um, but we do start the Cat Batman and Catwoman series after that. So super fun read. There's also some great variants out there of 76. So I definitely set you guys pick this up. All right, up next we have Justice League number 20, 29. This is written by Scott Snyder and James Tynan the fourth, and are by Bruno Redondo. Um, so this was a super fun read, super lighthearted. I believe, or I have a thought, I should say, that this was a lighthearted read right before we get into some seriousness that's going to be happening um, in the year of the villain. Um, I think some... The Justice League is going to be going through some hard times in the future. I think the Legion of Doom is going to get really close to um, achieving their goals, which I think a lot of bad things is going to happen to the Justice League. Um, and if you read issue number 28, um, Martian Manhunter is now gone. I believe he's going to be coming back. But um, we saw our 
Lex Luthor actually actually absorb him into himself, into his new uh, alpha predator, I believe is what it's called. Um, his new body, which is like this creepy, like pale version. He's like right there. Um, so this was, most of this issue happened in Starro's mind. He is like, he had attached himself to all of the Justice League and he was trying to get them on a ship to kind of take them off world so he could save them from the impending dude, impending doom of the Legion of Doom. But uh, Batman figured it out, pulled Starro off and got him to release the Justice League and they talked about how um, they are going to, no matter what, rise above the doom and save everyone. Um, but there was a really cool ending um, showing a little update to what the Legion of Doom is up to and we get some a little uh, hint of the future of Jaro and Starro. Um, so yeah, super fun read. Like I said, we got some history of Starro and Jaro is just a super fun character. I really, really enjoyed him. Um, so yeah, I was just picking this book up, especially if you're reading Justice League. If you're not reading Justice League, you definitely can skip, skip it. I think the next issue, number 30, is going to be a big issue, but it was fun. I would definitely suggest picking this up. All right, next up, we have Lois Lane, number two. This is written by Greg Rucka and art by Mike Perkins. Um, and just like in my last review of this book, this book is super, super fun. Um, it's just a very smartly written book. Greg Rucka is doing this a great job of laying out uh, this mystery um, that Lois Lane is investigating. And he's, he's just, he's teasing little things. He's just keeping me intrigued. And it's so good to read read a book set in the DC universe that is not, you know, dealing with this crazy big bads and anything like that. It's just dealing with a murder that happened because um, reporters were looking into this government and now Lois Lane is looking into this murder of a fellow reporter. Um, and obviously craziness is happening. And I love that they're dealing with, at the beginning of the book, there's uh, Lois Lane, there's, there was pictures of Lois Lane kissing Superman and the media is going nuts over it because everyone knows Lois Lane was uh, married to Clark Kent. And now there's like thinking like, oh, she's cheating on Clark Kent and she's horrible. And you know, the media making Lois Lane like, you know, since she's a dirty, scummy reporter, making her out to be even worse. And it's just a really smartly written book. And it's super enjoyable, like I said, to get some real world, um, story of real people in the world of superheroes so i would definitely highly suggest you guys pick this book up the art is you know it's not great like i would definitely say it's kind of like the deceased book it's kind of rough around the edges but the coloring um in this book definitely helps sell it it's super fun um book where i'm more uh, focused on the story than the actual artwork itself so i'm not doesn't bug me that the artwork, I don't love the artwork, but definitely suggest you guys pick this up. This is a maxi series, so there's 10 issues left after this, and I am super excited to see where this goes, so um, pick it up. All right, up next, we have my first indie book. This is Sea of the Stars, number two. This is written by Jason Aaron and Dennis Halem, Halem, and art by Stephen Green. Um, I believe I reviewed this in my last video, it's been so long. But um, super fun book. So this deals with, it's like set way in the future where planets are colonized and um, a father and son are on this ship and they're transporting cargo and the ship gets destroyed by this giant space creature um, and father and son get separated. And at the end of the book, um, that, the first book dealt with mostly um, the son's point of view. And this book dealt with most of the father's point of view of what happened right as the attack happened and his um, search for his son. And we did see a little bit of the son at the end of the book, but man, it is a super fun read. It's, it might be, I might be enjoying this because I am a father and I have, I have my, own, my, my own son, but I also, um, you know, there's Nate, my girlfriend's son, um, that, you know, I love dearly and, you know, what I would do if I was like, you know, I was their only parent because the mother in this had died. So the father was 
you know, now a single dad. And what would I would do if I was separated from my sons and they were depending on me? Um, I would do this too, I think. But oh, it's just, it's fun. It's a super fun read. And I love the art in this book by, I don't want to say the wrong name, Stephen Green. It's just, it's, it's not super detailed like in some of the other books, especially like in Ryan Stegman's Absolute Carnage. But it's still, the, the facial expressions he does sells it. Because I feel the father's pain. I feel the father's longing to be with his son and his desire to get there. He sells it through the face and the eyes. And yeah, it's really, really good. I just also love that, you know, it's set in the future and there's space and there's creatures and they can just go nuts with like all these different things. And it's super, super fun. I probably said super, super fun way too much, but definitely pick up Sea of the Stars, number two. It was, it was a great, great book. All right, uh, I believe this is my last book of the week. Hopefully this isn't a super long episode, but we have Space Bandits, number two. This is written by Mark Millar and art by Matteo Scalara. Scalara? Yeah, I think it's Scalara. Um, super fun book. This is another space book, which is pretty hilarious, but I love I don't love this as, um, maybe I do, maybe I don't, I don't know. See the Stars is absolutely incredible. This was, but what I love about this book is that the two leads are female characters and they're completely different styles of badass. We have a girl that is a badass in that she is like a badass with guns and can beat the crap out of people. Um, doesn't care if it's guys, girls, she is just super um, martial art badass. And then we just have a very strategic, not afraid of anyone because she has a plan and can plan her way out of anything type of character, female character. And it's just super cool. Um, and I also love that there's crazy aliens and they're on a, these two female characters in her penitentiary that's on the back of a turtle and floating in space. Um, yeah. And I just love where these get, where this, uh, story is going and I would definitely suggest you guys picking this book up especially if you're in kind of like space odyssey type stuff um, and you're looking for a book with two amazing female leads because this was a super fun read it's Mark Millar he's one of the best writers out there and this hands down is just another one that I loved um, so I know that I said that that was my last book um, of the week and there was but I also did pick up Doom Patrol number two and I'm super stoked to write this uh, read this I just haven't read number one, um, but this is written by Gerard Way, and I've loved his Doom Patrol stuff so far. So I'm, I will, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I'll put my Instagram handle, on, handle up here. Stay tuned for short little reviews on there. Um, I'm going to be trying to catch up on all the stuff I missed in the last few weeks um, on there. So stay tuned. Definitely, if you have not follow me on there, follow me because, like I said, I'm gonna get short little reviews on there with some cool imageries or pictures from the books. And yeah, that's gonna do it for the week. It's definitely sweet. It's late at night, I'm super tired, but it was a great week in comics, guys. Oh, Absolute Carnage number one, House of X number two, Batman 76, some really good stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what books you guys picked up. Because I've, like I said, I've always wanna know what you guys, are guys pick, what you guys are picking up. Um, and if you guys are picking something up that was really great and I missed it, let me know, because I need, more suggestions. I need to know what, what you guys would like to hear my thoughts on. So that's going to be it. If you guys are not subscribed, make sure you guys get yourself subscribed and you guys know what to do. If you guys like this video, smash that like button. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming by and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.